To dare to live alone is the rarest courage, someone once wrote. Whether courage or merely an inability to cope, the Salmon River has attracted an interesting mix of hardy souls who relished the solitary life. They're a different personality that comes out and lives under those conditions. You would uh, expect them to be a little different, at least I expected them to be a little different. Omer Drury remembers many of the river's characters. Drury was a medical doctor in the community of Troy, Idaho. And in his spare time, he ran an outfitting business. His first rafting trip on the salmon was in 1962. That's when he started bringing along a 16 millimeter movie camera to document his encounters with old timers like Frank Lance. He was an old man by the time I got acquainted. And as I first visited with him, he said, I built all the trails in this part of the canyon. I thought, well, you're getting old, Frank, and maybe you're exaggerating a little, but he had built most of the trails. So. I also met Hank the Hermit. And he took us out and showed us his cellar. His cellar was in a pit that turned out to be a shaft he was digging down to find gold. He had an idea that there'd be an underground stream, and if he got to that underground stream, it'd be full of gold. He had books of addresses. He was gonna visit everybody when he found that gold. Next down the river in our time was probably Francis. And if you came in unexpected on Francis and she didn't like the way you reacted when she saw you, she told you to get off the place. If she liked you, which she did us way, she was offended if you didn't stop and come up. And she always told us you can bring your friends on up. She loved to be dressed up and sometimes would bake a cake and come down to the river and eat lunch with the group. Perhaps the most colorful of this rare breed was Sylvan Hart, who arrived in the canyon in the 1930s at the height of the Great Depression. In his handwritten autobiography, Hart wrote, my reaction to the depression was to find a place with natural resources to defeat it. I could have found no better place than Salmon River. I spent some $50 a year then for what little I needed to buy. The man others came to call Buckskin Bill lived along the south bank of the Salmon River at Five Mile Bar for close to 50 years. Buckskin enjoyed just stopping. We used to speculate on which one of the good-looking young ladies of the group that Buckskin would choose to dress up in a costume. Joanna of Arc, I remember, was one of these characters. If there was kids along, he liked to ask them if they liked kittens and bring out a jar of cougar kittens that he had preserved besides these things that he'd made, his guns and his knives. And it was real craftsman work. Very proud of that big over an inch bore. I don't know whether you'd call it a gun, a rifle, almost a cannon, but uh, it was to be held and shot. He never demonstrated it for us, but he explained and showed us the ball. He had to have a piece of cloth through it to keep it from spinning like a baseball. It would curve, so he had to keep it straight. I got the impression that most of them were uncomfortable with too close a neighbors, that they like to have some choice of their neighbors and who they visited with and were very personal about their time so that you didn't want to infringe. If you infringe too much, you wouldn't be welcome. They always treated me real nice. Oh, I cherish the memories of they put a life to the canyon. Those people are not being replaced, you see. The governmental agencies are getting a hold of the property on Lance. They had his property before he died that they had gotten him to sign that over to them. Hank the Hermit, they put a match to his building just as quick as they could get there after he died. So they're destroying some of those things so that we don't have them even the buildings for posterity. But there were more than hermits on the river. At the turn of the century, a series of 